Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial on this look right here. I use the new Pure Cosmetics and Raw Beauty Christie palette. I am so beyond excited for her for collaborating with Pure. The palette is absolutely amazing. It is a double-sided palette. So you have the colorful side here, which is what I used today, obviously. But then if you flip it over on this side, there is a neutral side, which is just brilliant. I think the whole concept is just so cool, so innovative, and I love the color selection. So I'm gonna walk you through this look step-by-step. Step. I actually tried to recreate her look from the promotion pictures, this one here. So I tried my best. The colors are so easy to blend out. I don't even really do like reviews anymore just because makeup is so personal, but like the quality of this is just amazing. And it was so easy to create with the shadows. The only thing I had a hard time with was the technique, just actually trying to create a dramatic look. But Christy, I am so proud of you. This is absolutely amazing. If you don't watch her or follow her, I will link her down below. You probably already are because she's just the best, but she is hands down one of the nicest, sweetest people I've ever met. And she deserves this and so much more. So congratulations, Christy. I'm so proud of you, so excited. But yeah, I'm gonna walk you guys through how I got this look step-by-step. Step. I hope you enjoy. Please subscribe and let's get started. I'm actually gonna start with my eyes first just because I know this is gonna be a more like bold and colorful look. And just in case I do get any fallout, then I can just wipe it away and do the face. I'm so excited to use her palette. So this is what it looks like. The artwork is stunning. I know she did all of this artwork herself and I love how personal the palette is. This is the colorful side. I will be using the colorful side today. I did use a little bit of the neutral side in another video. This is what it looks like here. The whole concept of this palette is so cool. I love how it's double-sided, but it's not like too bulky either. There's mirrors on both sides. The side that's neutral has like a rose gold foil on it. And then the colorful side has like more of an iridescent silvery foil. So you know what side it is that you're opening. So this is such a great palette for traveling, especially if you do like to play with more colorful eyeshadows and you also like neutral eyeshadows, you would really love this palette. I think she knocked this out of the park. She did such a good job. I'm so proud of her. Congratulations, Christy. I'm, I'm so happy for you. I really want to recreate the look that she did for the campaign shoot because it was just stunning. Look at my aunt. That's just beautiful. I won't be able to do it as good as her because she's phenomenal. I think that's what I want to do today. Let's do it. I'm nervous. I hope I don't mess it up. I haven't done like colorful look in a long time, like truly colorful look besides purple. Purple's a neutral to me. I'm going to go in with a Smith 232. This is one of my favorite fluffy brushes for the eyes. I think I'm going to first go into Garden State. So I'm gonna really tap off the excess and actually put a little bit on the back of my hand just because I don't know how pigmented these are gonna be. And I wanna make sure I'm working up to the color that I eventually want. She kind of has it like go out and wing. I'm gonna start in the crease here and I'm wiggling. So I'm just following the crease here, very lightly wiggling. I'm holding pretty far back on the brush so I'm not applying too much pressure. My eyes are primed, by the way. I primed with the Painterly Paint Pot. I also did my brows first just because I can't do my eyeshadow without doing my brows first. Once there's a lot of product off, I'm just gonna kind of blend this upwards. I'm gonna start flicking it out and up like this. So I'm not gonna put any pressure over here. I'm just keeping the pressure here and flicking it up. A lot of the product is off. I actually scooched a little bit closer up on the ferrule so I can get a little bit more pressure. But since there isn't a lot of product left on the brush, I can do that so it won't apply too much. Lightly blending this in little circles and windshield wiper motions like this just to poof that color upwards. I'm also coming sort of from above. When I'm doing like a cut crease look, I'll say come from above and blend it like this so the tip of your brush is coming down like this. But when you start going, it'll automatically start to go down. It's just if you're mentally thinking that, it will help you to get the right shape going. You know what I mean? All right, we got that started. I'm gonna do this side. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Lumos. This is a matte white shade, and I'm gonna use that to blend out the Garden State shade. Brighten this up. Also kind of help to lighten up the color, made it a little bit more pastel. You can also mix those two together. So say you didn't wanna go in with that green of a shade or like that colorful of a shade for the Garden State shade, you can always add the white into it to mix it and it'll go on lighter right away. Already I'm, I'm liking this. Okay, so I'm gonna start building up the color. I'm going into a really tiny brush. This is a lip brush. It's the LO6 from Sigma and it's, 
technically a lip brush, but I love it for precise things on the eyes. Then I'm gonna take Garden State, same shade we've been using. I'm just gonna go in with the more detailed brush and start creating the shape just more defined than we have been. So I'm gonna go right into the crease of my eye and start mapping it out. I'm actually looking directly straight and down-ish into my mirror so I can see where that crease is. And if it gets messy, don't worry, you can clean it up later. So I'm just following, see the fold here? I'm going all the way down to the fold. And then when I look up, I can see the line that I'm creating. So now my fold of my eye stops there and now I'm gonna start hooking it around my orbital bone. So I'm gonna start hooking that under and flicking it up towards the brow like that. You don't wanna put any pressure out here too much because it'll be too harsh and it won't give that flick effect. That should be good to start off. If I need it to be more dramatic, I can blend it to be more dramatic. I just don't wanna go too overboard and then it looks crazy. So now I'm just gonna go in and still I haven't gone in with any more product. I'm just building this up and kind of blending it out-ish. And now I'm gonna start flicking this upwards. Still haven't gone in with any more product. Flicking up, I'm avoiding the two ends because I want those to be very defined. Flicking, starting where we have the most product and flicking upwards. And now with that first brush, whatever's left over on it, I'm gonna go in and again, approach from the top so you don't drag this color down. If you come down here, it's gonna drag this downwards. I want this to stay north of the equator, you know? So I'm just kind of going in there and I'm not picking up my brush at all. These bristles are staying put and I'm just rubbing this around so it can go north. Okay, and now I'm gonna go into the Lumos shade, that white shade, and just add that in to continue with the pastel bright effect. I'm gonna go into a Wayne Goss number 20 brush. It is like a really small fluffy brush. I'm gonna take the Garden State shade, adding more color. I'm now gonna take the same lip brush and I'm gonna go into Hurtful, which is this dark blue shade here. And I'm gonna start deepening this up. And then I'm gonna go back into Garden State and go right over that on the edge to blend that out. That same lip brush. Okay, I'm gonna take Garden State on a Smith 247 and blend that out. That brush is gonna be too big. I'm gonna use that Wayne Goss number 20 because that was a little large. I'm going directly over that line and if a little goes below, it's okay. We're gonna clean that up. We just are focusing on really getting this blended out on the top. I'm gonna grab some Lumos and a little bit of Garden State mixing them together on the brush itself and bringing that through the very top of this look here to blend that out. I'm gonna take a MAC 239 brush. This is just a flat uh, eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna go into Lumos, the bright white shade, and just pack that on right underneath the brow. This is also gonna make the blue and green pop in the crease. I'm gonna add a touch of Cafe Disco into the brow bone. I love the office reference. <laughs> and just to add a little bit of shimmer into the look. And then with my fluffy brush, blend those two together. I'm gonna grab my concealer. This is just the Pat McGrath concealer. I'm gonna put a little bit on the back of my hand like this. And then I'm gonna take a very flat brush. This is a MAC 242 brush. This is actually what I used to prime my eyes today. I'm just gonna pick up the concealer here on this brush. And then I'm gonna start placing it on the eyelid. And I'm gonna go right under where that line is, push it and drag it down and then open up my eyes and look straight ahead and it will transfer to the highest point that your eye opens up at. So it went a little further, so I'm gonna take this a little further and now you can go and finish the shape. And now I'm gonna grab that 239 brush with the Lumos shade and I'm just gonna go right over the top of that. I'm just gonna use a fluffy brush to apply this instead of like a dense brush just because it is a matte eyeshadow going over a cream. So I'm just kind of pushing it on. You can use any brush. I'm using a rough for number 14. And I'm gonna use the dense brush for right at the crease where the white and green blues meet so that it's that contrast. I'm just deepening this up and intensifying the top now with Hurtful and then blending that out with Garden State. It looks like in the picture, she continued the blue into the liner on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna use the same um, LO6 brush I've been using and I'm gonna go into Hurtful 
and just create a wing down here on the bottom. You know, when you don't do like colorful looks for a while or dramatic looks, sometimes it's like, ooh, I don't know if I can still do that. But I'm very pleased, very pleased that I didn't mess this up. And now I'm gonna grab the Garden State shade and just kind of like go over the edges to diffuse it. it. Kind of gives that same illusion to the liner as the top. After I finish the face, I might end up going in and um, adding a little bit more shimmer to the brow bone highlight, but we'll see once it's all done what it ends up looking like. But Ooh, I love this look. I feel like it is just so much fun. So bold, bright. It's like bright but deep at the same time. I love it. I'm gonna move on to my face makeup. I did add, I took it away. I left a little bit of concealer there just because I don't wanna get too close with my concealer when I'm blending it out. Yeah, it'll all come together at the very end. For primer, I'm gonna use the Tatcha primer, liquid silk canvas primer. I'm just gonna apply that on the skin. Ooh, it feels good. I usually do my face makeup after the eyes, but I'm glad I did today because this is so dramatic. I'm not used to having to be careful around the eyes when I'm like primer and stuff. So then for foundation, I'm gonna use this new one that I just tried the other day and I loved it. This is by the brand Found. It's their Nourishing Liquid Foundation and I have the shade 130 Light Medium. Looks like this. This is a Walmart exclusive foundation actually. So I'm gonna blend this in with the It Cosmetics number seven brush. It feels very hydrating on the skin, but it dries down to kind of like a soft matte finish, but it doesn't look flat at all. All right, now that that, that is all applied. I'm gonna take this and kind of stamp it over that edge so that eyeshadow can kind of diffuse into the foundation. I already feel like this side looks better than that side. Diffusing that and blending it into the temples. I'm actually gonna grab my fluffy brush and just, this has like barely anything on it. And just lightly diffuse that whole look. I love that foundation. It reminds me a lot actually of the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I'm gonna go in with that Pat McGrath concealer that we used on the eyes and just conceal underneath. I'm gonna use a FO3 brush from Sigma to blend this out. Since we have blues on the eyes, I'm gonna go like crazy concealed underneath just because you don't want the blue to pull underneath too much in like the eye bag area. I am gonna carry the shadows underneath, but you don't want it to look like you have like the eye bags. And I'm gonna use the back of my IT Cosmetics brush to get really close. I'm actually gonna go into the Hollywood Contour Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. I haven't used this in a long time. It's one of those ones that cranks open here and then you can go directly on the skin or you can pick it up with a brush. I'm just gonna go directly. Okay, I'm just gonna grab my It Cosmetics number seven brush, blend this out. I'm gonna apply this here on the cheek, the forehead and jawline, and then go in with my other It Cosmetics number seven brush and just blend it out. I'm gonna go into the Lauren Conrad liquid highlighter and highlight my cheekbones. Just working off the back of my hand so I don't apply too much and just popping it right up here. I'm quickly just setting my face with the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder, mainly in the areas that I get oily. So like right here on the front of the cheek and the side of the nose, right in between my eyebrows and on the center of the forehead and then my chin. I'm gonna bronze up my face with a little bit of the Laguna bronzer from NARS and I'm using a double-ended brush from Hourglass. The tone of this bronzer like really complements the eyeshadow because the eyeshadow is blue and green. For blush, I'm gonna use the new Sublime Flush Blush from Hourglass. It's like a pearlescent pinky kind of color. I'm gonna use an F40 from Sigma. I'm just applying it on my cheeks and a little up on the forehead, nose, chin, neck, everywhere. So I'm gonna start with doing Hurtful, the blue on that lip brush and popping it right at the lash line and like connecting to the wing that we have. Just wiggling that into the lashes. I'm gonna take a clean fluffy brush with Lumos on it and just go right there before going in with any of the darker colors and just brightening up this whole inner corner area and also bringing it up into here. I'm gonna go into the Makeup Forever eyeliner and add this into the waterline and then go back in. I'm actually gonna do Garden State now and kind of just smudge this 
underneath to blend out the black. For the inner wing, I'm gonna use that LL4 brush, or L6 I mean. I'm gonna grab Garden State, follow the line of my upper lash line, and carry it into the bottom waterline like that. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of Hurtful, but not too much. I'm gonna use the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara for both of them because I'm just gonna be covering up the top with some really bold upper lashes. So I'm just coating these with this. All right, she came out with two different lashes. We have Lovely and Can't Be Bothered. I think I'm gonna go into Can't Be Bothered because they are a little bit more bikier and piecier, and I think that's really gonna go with this whole vibe. These are some lashes. These might be the most dramatic lashes I've ever put on. For my lips, so she does like a more glossy lip, and I prefer more matte, so I'm gonna stick with matte today. I'm gonna grab Rosewood from Laura Mercier. I'm gonna line and overline my lips. That's like straight pink so I'm gonna go in with oak from MAC those actually mix really well together and then I have two lipsticks that I want to try out today um, I used this one in my last tutorial this is my Tweety from MAC and then I also have this one from Becca it's called yours truly which I know this has more of a sheen to it so I'm gonna probably mix these two together this is the final look I'm very happy with how it turned out I'm so glad I could make it look somewhat like hers she's so talented so I was nervous that I wasn't gonna be able to do it. I am so in love with this palette. I think it's beautiful. I love the neutral side. I love the variety of the colorful side. And I also like that there isn't a black in here because I feel like with a lot of palettes, they include a black, but including that matte white with such bright colorful shades makes it so much easier to blend because having such a bright shade and then needing like a lighter shade of that color, you can just mix the white in with it and it creates that color. So I love this look. I feel feel definitely out of my comfort zone, but in a good way because it's been a long time since I've played around with such bright colors and such a different look. But that's everything for this video and this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed following along. If you want to see more looks with this palette, let me know. I love the reds and pinks in here too. I've seen a couple looks done with that and they're just stunning. So let me know. Uh, congratulations, Christy, on this palette and congratulations, Pure, with collaborating with Christy. It's just such a beautiful palette. I'm so proud of you. So excited to play with this. And when we can all start traveling again, this is definitely something that I will be packing with me because of the variety that it gives. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed following along with this tutorial. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me down below. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you very soon.